Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Be Is For Build. This is the final build episode on our 1967 Mustang Fastback Shelby GT500 Tribute build. This thing started life as a 2019 Mustang GT. We cut the entire body off of it. We took a 1967 Mustang Fastback body and put it on top of that chassis, welded it up around the seams, did things like building a roll cage, relocated the gas cap, converted all the modern electronics to work with the classic car, upgraded the suspension, the wheels, the tires, the tail lights. We sent it for a test drive. Then we custom 3D modeled our very own front bumper and built it out of fiberglass from scratch as well as our upper headlights around in the styling of the Shelby GT500 and the GT350. Fiberglassed all that with our side skirts and our fender flares onto the car. And that leads us to where we are today. We've got a paint. We've got a vinyl wrap. We've got to install upgrades, power upgrades, internal upgrades. We've got to build an interior. We've got a hot wire lighting. We've got to make this a finished vehicle in the next two days. Just shy of, no, just a little over 48 hours before we have to be on the road for SEMA. Can't wait to see what it looks like when it's done. Let's get started. All right guys, getting started, we have to paint, but this car is actually going to be wrapped. We got a really, really nice Anosatec wrap for this car. Why are we wrapping rather than painting? Well, you don't paint a SEMA car if you're two days before SEMA. If you have a chemical reaction, anything goes bad, paint doesn't catalyze, something goes wrong, you'll ruin your whole SEMA build and you'll be SOL. So you gotta wrap it, but also I really love wrapping because of the ability that it gives you to quickly change colors and change the appearance of a car, especially on this car that looks so good in a lot of colors. I wanna wrap it, but so why are we painting? We wanna have really, really clean looking jams between say different panels. We don't want those to be you know, missing colors. We wanna have really good adhesion on the wrap. And lastly, we learned this thing is when we're doing a lot of custom work, like what we are, you know, let's say this, custom fiberglass front bumper. When you go to wrap this and you're pulling the wrap on and off a lot of times, the wrap can pull up crap from your, uh, from your work. So it needs to be really, really well painted down, the surface has to have a nice coating over it to be safe to make sure you're not gonna ruin your wrap. So that's why we are starting with paint today and ending with wrap in two days. So two paint in here, uh, we have some supercars everywhere that we don't wanna get painted. So we're gonna move the tent in, but before we move the tent in, we gotta clean up. So we're gonna start uh, de-dustifying the build. We're gonna try and get as much of this uh, body filler dust out of here and clean up the body and everything of this car as much as we can before we move on to the painting phase. Car's ready to be painted. It is 4 a.m. We had to do some somewhat stupid stuff. So here's the reason why. We have to start wrapping tomorrow. Paint has to be dry before we could start wrapping, which means that we had to just, we gotta start painting. The car's ready for it, but the, the location ain't so much. So here's what we did. We got these really cool EPA compliant fan filters, air filters. We put them on our two massive fans here. They're pulling the air through the filter and then just blowing it at the garage door. My biggest worry is that we have supercars on that back wall. I don't want to damage the paint on them with overspray. So I'm gonna have Kyle and Oscar stand right over there about 15 feet back from the car with no respirator on or anything. If they start smelling paint fumes and it smells like heavy like paint, we're gonna open the garage door, which then will risk dropping the temperature in here below painting temperature, which could make the paint not catalyze and screw up Absolutely everything. But that would be our plan for aerating the area. But right now we're just gonna try and catch it all in those filters <coughs> and hope it works. Game plan is to jump inside the car, paint the cage first, paint around the back window line, hop out, finish painting the back window line, and then I can start painting the back back here. It's been completely wiped down, de-dustified, de-nibbed, wax and grease removed. It's ready. Now 
We got done painting at 5 a.m. technically this morning, and I've got some really good news, and I've got some bad news. We'll start with the bad news. This paint was just one big example of why we don't paint cars before SEMA. We got paint reactions that caused fish eyes. In almost every single part that I painted, we got paint reaction that caused fish eyes. And this is from contamination on the panel. The wax and grease remover we used just did not do a good enough job to clean the panel. There's way too much dust in this paint job. There's dust nibs absolutely everywhere, which is not acceptable. And lastly, the color just ain't the color that it was supposed to be did not spray out like it was on the swatch. It should be so much blacker. On the positive side, we pushed really hard last night. We heated up the car, the whole shop, really hot last night, and we got the paint to dry well. So it's sandable, and it's gonna do the job that we wanted, which is to help the adhesion of the vinyl wrap and to have the right color within the jams. So we're good there. We are, however, because it's not the right color, gonna do the door jams and steal it black. It's a paint that comes out a nice satin color. I really like it. It's extremely durable. It's corrosion resistant. They also sent us a case for this build. So thanks to steal it. We'll put a link in the description. That is kind of our default fallback on a lot of builds because it's just great stuff. Oscar's spraying it right now, actually. So door jams are gonna be steel of black rather than this, it's like, a, it's like a mocha color. I don't love it. So the job to do right now is to lightly sand with like 400 grit. Um, anywhere that we got dust nibs in the paint to get those out so the vinyl wrap will not have any bumps underneath it. Painting the door jams as well. And the other piece of really good news that I got guys is so I left 5, 5 a.m. we left here, got home, slept for about two hours. I had to head to the hospital to do some of my stuff that I do around my cancer treatment and that is scans. So I did a CT scan this morning, I got the results back and I am still all clear which makes two years of being all clear from my cancer. If you guys are just joining us, I had a stage 3B melanoma, which is a pretty tough diagnosis for cancer. And uh, I did treatment for a year, and this has been a whole year off of treatment, and I'm looking good. So that is extremely good news. I am so pumped about that. It's something that it weighs heavy on my mind as we're doing these SEMA builds, because I get this scans the same time throughout the years, and this the October scan's a big one for me. So it's just, it's a, it's a weight off my shoulders, it's a weight off my mind, and now I can focus on SEMA build, focus on my secondary goals. First goal is health, secondary is build. So we're gonna get everything prepped and ready for the wrap team for when they get here. Transformation is about to begin. So Fred and his team from Rapco have arrived and these guys are like our saving grace. I literally hit them up a day before I needed them to come out and they're like, yep, we got time. We're gonna come out, we're gonna help you out. As they did last year on the white Mustang, which was pretty incredible too. Basically what happened is we were planning on wrapping this mostly ourselves, maybe calling in an expert like Fred for some of the hard stuff on the front end. Uh, and then in the last episode, when we realized that our, our bumper and our headlights around weren't coming at all, we had to kind of steal some time away from the schedule um, and get some professionals in here to do the wrap while we do other things at the same time. That's the only way we were going to get this done in the right time frame. So thanks to Fred and his team over at Rapco. I'll put a link in the description. They are saving our ass. So they're going to go ahead and get started wrapping this thing right now. It's going to be a really fast change visually on the car, which is going to be really awesome. While they're doing that, we're going to start uh, poking around at interior stuff and see what we can build. As you guys have seen, the wrap is going on wonderfully. We're gonna start working anywhere we can that's out of their way, and right now that's under the hood. So uh, one of the really cool upgrades to do on this vehicle is a cold air intake. There's really proven horsepower gains that are there to be had. Holly makes a great cold air intake for this video that they just so happen to send my way. So we're gonna go ahead and get that installed right now. Ha. 
It's about nine o'clock. The wrap crew is out of here. And so now it's time for us to really get cranking and do kind of like the night shift. Any work that we do when they're here, we can't be kicking up dust and stuff like that or it risks getting stuck underneath the wrap and that would be catastrophic. So it's time to do the heavy lifting, put in another long night. We did 5 a.m. last night. We'll see what we do tonight. It might have to be an all-nighter. Just finished the install of the Holly Intech cold air intake. So it goes through here, slides down here. Gets fresh air from right here. This thing shows horsepower gains. I'll put the image right here on the screen. I think it's like over 20 horsepower and torque to the wheels, dyno proven. That is a really, really good boost. Now, we need to start working on the interior paneling. We've never done any of this before. This is reproduction OEM paneling for the 67 Fastback. We've notched it to fit around the roll cage and fit a seatbelt to run through there. This is kind of how the pieces come and you can see that this one's like all super shiny, weird stamp plastic. This one has the same texture but it's fiberglass so it's not shiny. And I saw that problem coming so I ordered some faux leather vinyl basically. This has got a sticky back and a leather front and we're gonna try and do an upholstery covering on all of these interior parts so they all match and look really, really nice. While we're doing that, Kyle's gonna jump in here and do one more part that we got from Holly. It's a Hurst short shifter. The first Mustang that we ever got, the first S550 Mustang that we ever got had a Hurst short shifter on it and it felt amazing and I really, really liked it. So I wanted to have that in this build as well. So it was on my Holly wish list. There's one more Holly wish list item to come too. And um, so, Kyle's gonna figure out, I'm sure it's gonna involve lifting out the center console and getting in there into the shifter dealies, but we'll get it, we'll get it about halfway done and show you what it looks like. Short shifters are usually pretty easy, uh, easy task. This one, not so much. Guys, if you think this is a, you know, do it the night before SEMA project and it's just gonna take an hour, it, it's gonna take a little longer. Um, to summarize, drop the exhaust, drop the transmission, drop the drive shaft. We'll probably drop the drive shaft, then drop the transmission, get on top of the transmission once it's dropped and pull out the shifter mechanism. It's not quite dropping it, it's lowering it. So now that that's out, we can replace the shifting mechanism with this uh, shorter throw shifting mechanism. It looks like we're gonna be replacing the bushing as well. That looks like that one right there and some other stuff. And then we'll get it back in the car. Good job, Kyle. You guys saw us wrapping interior pieces. This stuff is awesome. I am gonna link it in the description. If you have weird interior projects at home that you wanna wrap in like a faux leather or anything like that, Try this stuff out. I'm gonna link it in the description. It's just a cheap eBay option and it's pretty solid. I really, really like that. The other thing that we did, you saw, is uh, wrapping some dash pieces. So this piece that goes right there and right there, this is like a bottom of the line trim option car. And uh, it has this like stamped fake carbon fiber silver stuff that I didn't really like. And one hack that my first boss ever taught me, he had a, like a nice five series BMW and he had taken all of his interior pieces off and had them paint match to match the outside of the car. And they looked really, really nice. So we did that on this thing. I vinyl wrapped the dash pieces and they actually look really, really nice. So they match the roll cage and they match the wrap on the outside of the car. So it's a nice little touch. Oscar's working on the end plates. Like we, uh, we'd we shown you guys, we had to trim a lot of stuff off of here. So you have to build a nice little plate, attach some trim and get that stuff all nice and looking clean once again. But overall the interior is, well, it's very apart, but it's gonna come back together real nice.
clock check. It's 3.37 in the morning. Interior pieces are done. Well, they're they're wrapped with leather. We can't start installing them because they got we got to do a scoop right here. And to do that, we have to bolt it down and it bolts down right over there. Somehow this footage got missed in all the other episodes. Shout out to the company, Be Quiet. They make this uh, sound deadening for us. They provided us with a ton of sound deadening. Uh, it's super good stuff. And part of the reason this car sounds so good with no road noise. Huge thanks to Be Quiet. On the shifter, this thing is money. It looks the roll, it feels really good in the hand, and the shifts are short and snappy. So that is really nice. Next and final thing that we got from Holly. So we're really working on upgrading the interior a little bit as well, right? So it's cool that it is a 2019 interior in a classic car, but let's make it the best we can. So infotainment center will be last, but steering wheel is up next. So this steering wheel looks like that. Upgraded steering wheel looks like this. This thing is a piece of art. This thing's created by one of Holly's subsidiary companies, uh, Drake Muscle Cars. It's got a really, really beautiful carbon fiber build out on the top. It's nice and meaty, so it's like, it really has a nice grip in the hand. It's got the nice stripe on the top for locating your top dead center, flat bottom, and then I opted for leather on the sides. Obviously steering wheel, huge integral part for interacting with your vehicle and connecting with your vehicle when you're driving. Dollars and cents wise, like horsepower, probably cheapest mod is gonna be cold air intake. Interior, this thing is definitely, definitely worth it. For all of these products, the cold air intake, short shifter, steering wheel, links are all gonna be in the description if you guys wanna check it out. So you can see side by side how much better it looks. It does look a little bit larger which is interesting and not really that possible because all the interior trim pieces so i think that's optical illusion so kyle's going to take the oem steering wheel off and swap it all over to this guy while kyle's working on the steering wheel i want to address two of the biggest comments that we've seen on this build number one fix the taillights check i will fix the taillights before we leave um I think, I think I'll have time. Two is a lot of people don't like the wheels. I was dead set on getting this set of wheels. I had them special ordered in from Koenig. It was not an easy task to get them. And we got them and I agree, something looked a little bit off. And this is why we partner with Koenig. We have such a tight relationship that I can tell them, hey, thank you so much for the free wheels, but I'm kind of not digging them so much. Can I try a different thing? And I didn't just say that. I was like, can I try a different everything? There's no other wheel company in the entire world that would support us the way that Koenig does. There is a wall of wheels over there and there's more wheels that have tires on them. We got 16 wheels sent to us. <laughs> Next day shipped so we could get the right option for this build. So we could get the thing that we felt fits it the best. So thank you so much to Koenig. This is why we love partnering with this company. We've been partnered with them since they're one of our very first sponsors and it's just, it's not a money thing. It's not anything like that. I just love working with this company. So with that being said, I'll show you the original wheels that we had picked out, why I don't think that they're a good fit anymore and why I think that you guys don't like them. And I'll show you the two options that we've narrowed it down to out of the four options that got shipped here. So this side of the quarter panel is wrapped so it's a better place to show off the wheels against the color of the car. So the wrap color, we haven't really addressed this. This is a, a Nozatec metallic black. And so it, it comes off as black. Uh, and then when the light bounces off of it, you see a little bit of like a titanium and then a little bit of like bronzy, coppery, um, brown um, flake in there that, that's bouncing back, giving it that metallic. And the wheel styling on this wheel is a Koenig Hypergram with the machine lip. And I'm not sure if they call it metallic black on the wheel or not, but anyways, it's really close to the paint. It's a really, really close paint match. The reason I think a lot of people don't like this wheel is, well, two reasons. One is that um, in a 17, which we got to run on this car because it's period correct, it, it has the machine lip is huge in comparison to the rest of the wheel. So this wheel in a larger size, as you size up, is going to look a lot better. I think that's what a lot of people don't like about it. The other thing is we can't run a ton of dish on this car. You just can't because if you look where the wheel mounting face is and where that's at in comparison to the wheel arch, it's really far out here. And that's part of just doing this body swap. So that's Koenig Hypergram. Let me show you another wheel. This wheel right here is a really good fit. This is the Koenig Heliogram. And it's a little bit wider of a wheel. It's eight and a half inches. So it does poke out away from the body a little bit more. But after we did the flares, it will fit. And I think kind of the dual spoke look uh, on these vehicles can be pulled off and I think it looks pretty good. My biggest concern with this is fitment, the amount that it does poke out given that it's a little bit wider of a wheel. And finally, the wheel that has won my heart. This is the Koenig Decagram and it's in a bronze color. 
but the bronze color really goes with the car color very well. Other cool thing about this wheel is it is a 10 spoke wheel and the traditional Shelby GT500 wheel, I'll put it up here on the screen right now, that's also a 10 spoke wheel. We can't run one of those wheels because the offsets are wrong, but this wheel very much does kind of look like a modern, a more modern version of that. And I love it. I love it so much. It's super lightweight too. It's a performance oriented wheel. It's a flow formed wheel. They're super strong and super light. And this is the one that I've chosen to go with. I wanted to ask all you guys on Instagram, but we, uh, we ran out of time. Tomorrow morning, bright and early, we're getting tires put on these wheels, and that's what we are bringing to SEMA, and I am super, super happy about them. Let me know in the comments what you think out of those three models that I showed you what your favorite is. Some of these will get sent back, but if there's another close second, I might hang on to them. All right, let's get back to installing a custom steering wheel. Kyle's got the new steering wheel in the car. It looks amazing. That is such a nice upgrade. So steering wheel, shift knob. Oscar's got the end caps on there looking good. Now to finish out the dash, we need to upgrade the infotainment center. That was an interesting one. I saw a lot of brands selling stuff for around a thousand dollar mark. Thousands dollars, thousand dollars, seven hundred dollars, a lot. And there's the eBay, Amazon stereo route. It was like 180 bucks. We're all about trying the budget version and seeing if it works out. So that's what I did. Bought the $189 version of an Android head unit. It's got an 8 inch screen and supposed to be able to handle everything that the car used to be able to handle. We're going to give it a shot. I mean, what do we got to lose? Right now we don't even have speakers in this thing. So Oscar's going to go ahead and install that uh, new infotainment center because that will allow him to finish out the dashboard. Ooh, fighter jets. Kyle's gonna be working, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but there's some fighter jets flying uh, overhead. But uh, Kyle's gonna be working on the headlights. Bucket's gotta be modified to make more room for our headlight to go through. We've retrofitted some older headlights that took a normal bulb with an LED bulb. These also have a blinker built into them, which is really handy for our application. I was gonna go with black. We have a set of black headlights available too, um, but I'm thinking this is gonna look better because we still have some chrome on the car, uh, on the door and the mirror, side mirror and the door handles chrome. So I think that light color is gonna match nicely. So we're gonna go with these, but we have black as a backup option as well. Yo, who would have thought that buying the $190 version of the screen might have some, some issues, some problems? Yeah. Maybe there's a reason that they cost $700. So here's the deal. This is the backside of the screen. And by the way, the eBay seller verified that this is the correct application for the car like a million times. They made me send the VIN number in before they'd sell it to me. Here's the circuit board. It's got the buttons on it and stuff like that. It lines up right like this. And the circuit board and the screen are heavily heavily interfering with each other. Like, there's no way both of these things are gonna live in the car. The buttons cannot make it out there. It hits the screen. Now, so there are two different button-filled keypads that obviously wouldn't be used if we switched over to the screen. So here's the slightly ridiculous thought that's coming through our heads right now. I mean, probably better to break it trying to make it work than go to SEMA without having it work. I think, I don't know. I mean, Thousand mile drive without a radio is gonna be tough, but um, so what we're thinking here is cut the keypad circuit board off on each side. We'll cut it off. There's not that many little circuits on the board running to it. It doesn't look like there's any processors. It should be okay. So we're gonna grab the cutoff wheel. We're gonna cut these off so it can fit in there with the screen. And we're gonna hope that when we go to power this thing back on, that it actually functions. If not, it'll just be a impressive looking screen with a totally dead stereo behind it. If this is the sketchiest thing we do on our SEMA build, I'm okay with that. I'm fine with that.
This wrap looks absolutely amazing. A nose attack makes some incredible product. The wrap is nice and thick too, so it does a good job of hiding our body imperfections from all our custom body work. I'm so happy right now with how this is turning out. <clears throat> and the interior looks great as well. I guess on the way over there, I'll show you some of the body. So we got the doors done, front bumpers being worked on. It's almost done. We got the front center pieces getting done. That's all a work in progress, but damn, it looks good. This door's done, rear quarter's done. Scoops are all done, they're ready to go. So when we jump in here, we've got the new infotainment center and we test powered it on and it does power on, but we don't have any speakers. So the classic cars, so like classic cars just didn't have a lot of speaker locations. It was kind of weird. So if we don't have one for the door, you can't really put one in the door unless it has a huge bulge out. But the stock one has speaker wires that run back there, back there, and there's wires that run to the door. Our game plan is to redirect some wires to run a four inch here in this piece of trim, same down on the other side. And then in the rear quarter uh, interior paneling, we're gonna put some six inches, one there and one there. So we ran to the store, we bought the speakers. Oscar's gonna go ahead and get those now into the paneling, and then we'll run some wires and test our stereo out. The rap team has left the building. I'm so happy with the job that they did. Huge shout out to Rapco. They not only saved us by getting us back on track, so it's not gonna be, hopefully not gonna be too crazy of a night to get to the finish line on this, but they did a great job. And also, shout out to a nose attack. This wrap is so cool. So from far back, the car looks very black. As you get a little bit closer, the light starts bouncing this kind of a little bit more brassy, color that I really, really like. It adds a lot of dimension to it, it has great shine, and it's just epic. So huge thanks to Anoza Tech. There's gonna be a link in the description. They provided this wrap to us. I really hope we can work together in the future, and maybe we'll do another color on this car a little bit later. Check out their website too. They have a lot of really, really cool colors that are super unique. Oscar's got the speakers in those uh, interior quarter panels. Uh, we went ahead and mounted some scoopage and Kyle's been working on um, hot wiring the headlights. So we steal the modern headlight uh, wiring bundle, identify which wire it is, and then transfer it over to a classic 70s headlight. Well, these are actually made 60s. Well, they're made recently, but they're a 60s model. So we're gonna be testing those out in a second. Right now we're gonna pop the hood off, put power to the car, turn on our stereo, and see what that does. This thing's cool, man. This is like super modern. Let's see, let's just try the radio. Oh, everything's gonna be copyrighted. Hmm. We've got static. Static is not copyrighted. Just soaking in that sweet, sweet copyright free static. I'm digging it. It's kind of got a heavy metal uh, tone to it. Yeah, this is oldie static. Oh, you think this is old? This is classic yeah. static? Yeah, it's classic static. It womps pretty hard. It could be dubstep. We're not sure. Stereo works. If you want to see all the silly stuff we get up to with that, uh, make sure you turn in for the next episode when we try and drive this thing to SEMA. That's it for the upgrades on the interior. So we got the steering wheel, the short shifter, the new stereo, and we wrapped that dash piece, both the dash pieces to match the exterior of the car. I love it. Now the rest of the stuff has got to be more classical. So we're working on the headliner. We're working on the paneling that goes back. We're working around the, the trunk separation unit and we need flooring. It's a lot of stuff for Oscar to do, but he's ready for the challenge. I'm trying to get everybody pumped up because we're realizing at this point, it's gonna be a late night. <laughs> this is our last day. We gotta have this thing done. I gotta drive it a thousand miles as soon as we are done. So let's get to it. Kyle's going to get headlights in the car wired up. Oscar's gonna continue working on interior. I'm gonna finish wrapping the back end. The guys uh, ran out of time, so I'm gonna finish wrapping this stuff up. I think I can handle two panels. Ready, set, go.
Kyle's got the headlights in with the headlights and the blinkers all plumbed in. Plumbed? Yeah, you can plumb electrical, right? Go ahead and give us some headlight action. There we go. That's our headlights. Nice clear color. And then like, how about the left blinker? And there's our blinker. And right blinker. So we got blinkers, we got headlights, we got high beams, we got low beams. Kyle's gonna go ahead and set up a piece of cardboard and start leveling these things out. And then we gotta put the headlight rings in there and that finishes off the headlight area. Oscar's got the interior wood edge uh, rocking and rolling. Now the next step for this is now that we've got it built, it's going to be covered in felt. So we run down to the fabric store, get some felt. We got the uh, uh, 3M Spray 90. It's like a spray adhesive glue. We'll glue the hell out of this thing. Once it gets tacky, you throw your felt on there. And that has worked for us very well in the past. Back here, I did manage to wrap a couple panels. So we got the panels on there. We got the gas cap on there. I'm going to go ahead and get the tail lights in so I can start working on fixing the tail lights. How are we doing on time? is a question I frequently ask myself. It's 1.30 a.m. I do have to go to sleep at some point tonight so I can be able to drive tomorrow because we got to start getting on the road tomorrow. Well, today, later today. The list is large, but if things fall in our direction, it'll go fast. If not, it'll be a weird one. Happy 3 a.m. the morning we need to leave for SEMA, everybody. Let's give you an update on what's been going on. Kyle got the headlights in, the headlight uh, surrounds in. Those are going great. Kyle got the grills in. I tested out a very small grill emblem that was comically small. So we took the other grill emblem that we have no way of attaching right now that I'm gonna need to 3D print something. We we'll put it in the glove box. I'm gonna temporarily install it at SEMA and then when we get home, I'll 3D print something. Got the hood pin. Uh, safety cables <laughs> connected up to the car so we're ready for the hood to start going on and stuff like that. Oscar's been working very hard on the interior. Now you're going to see that we have some silver exposed rivets. Those are going to be black in the long run but due to the time constraints what we're dealing with um, it's time to start pushing some stuff off till we get to SEMA. So we get to SEMA and we load in on a Saturday and the show doesn't start till a Tuesday, which is by my calculations, a hell of a lot more time than we have right now. So easy things like that, we're gonna push over till when we're at SEMA. But the interior is looking great and he got the felt on the wood and that piece is in there. The other piece is right there. I went ahead and fixed the taillights like everybody requested by diffusing them. They are blinking on the camera. That is a refresh rate thing. And I guess, you know what? On the camera, you can still see a bit of a dive down. In real life, you cannot see that. So that's just a, a difference between the camera's refresh rate and some other stuff. Anyways, I took that comically small emblem and I put it right over our rear view camera hole. Our new stereo isn't compatible with our old rear view camera. Long run, rear view camera will get 3D printed, shoved in there. But that's a nice back end. And then I put some uh, trunk stuff from the S550 Mustang in here. You know, on the edges, it's a little, it's a little cut up, but I thought it was nice. It was a nice little touch. I just threw it in there. It only took about 10 minutes to cut up. So I threw that stuff in there and we've got a good looking, uh, good, good looking back end going on here. So we got Kyle right now wrapping the uh, last piece of the interior in our really awesome um, fake leather vinyl stuff. And Oscar's jumping into the world of the door cards and the door open and closed latch. thingy latch. And then the, the window winder finishing out the doors. It's 6 a.m. We are absolutely delirious. We are tired, we're slowing down, but we're so close to being ready to drive. The unfortunate part is I haven't slept in like a long time. So 
I'm gonna need a nap before I can drive, but let's not worry about that. We need to get the car down now. We're gonna start looking at things like glass. We got the back interior all buttoned up. It's dirty, but other than that, it's, it's buttoned up. Well, there's some small holes. We got the headliner in, we got the door cards in. Door cards look great. We got our handles in. This is how you open the door. This is your window winder. That's the headliner going back into our interior. Great job by the team. To whip that all together, it actually looks like a complete car, which is pretty impressive considering that it's a total body swap. Now, we need to get it down so we can start working on glass and uh, hood stuff. So it's time to get the wheels and tires on. We have never seen them on this build. We went with the decagrams in the uh, bronze, I think is what we're calling that. Let's get them on the car, see how it looks. I'm excited to see the car on the ground too for the first time with paint. Wrap, color. I personally think it's a pretty cool improvement on the wheels. Now, we're under really intense lighting here, which really hits the metallic flake within the paint, so the paint is really popping a lot of bronze. Well guys, we got the wheels on the car, and we set it down, and we're just feeling like it's too much bronze. So this, this vinyl wrap has a lot of depth to it. It's great, and, but it, the, the metal flake in here is a bronzy, golden-ish uh, bounce of light, and that, when there's a lot of the car in direct sunlight, like kind of like what we have emulating here, it just makes the bronze on bronze look like too much. You need something to break it up. And so now we're into the titanium, and I think it's a good complement to the other chrome pieces that are on the car. Third wheel change is a charm. We don't have a tire machine here, so we have to go to a wheel and tire shop in two hours at 8.30 a.m. when they are open. So we're gonna try and get the rest of the car ready and then do that first thing when they open and uh, beg them to swap the tires out. And then we gotta have to probably adjust the suspension a little bit. This has a more aggressive offset. Um, so we might adjust the suspension a little bit to make sure that we don't have a uh, real sketchy uh, thousand mile road trip. And that's the game plan. So now we need to carry on. Kyle and I are gonna work on the back glass. Oscar's gonna work on getting the hood finalized. I think that's, that's the big list. I think we got a hood and two pieces of glass. Let's get, let's get going. It's 9.30 a.m., quick little update. We're all losing it. We always do a big push towards the end of the year, do a SEMA build, and uh, I, I don't try and build stuff up like, are we gonna make it, are we not, whatever. We, we know we're gonna make it. It's how much pain are we gonna go through, and that's supposed to be the entertaining part. <laughs> so, just wanna let you know, it's painful right now. It's not just like, oh, one night, you know, working overnight, it's like, two hours of sleep last night, three hours of sleep the night before, four hours of sleep the night before that, and it's all at different times, like we went to bed at five last night. I don't know, I can't even keep track anymore, but it's, it's aggressive, but luckily it's the last day. But we are on the very, very last pieces of to-do work. Oscar's getting the weather stripping in. Look at this weather stripping, this is super cool. We mix and match stuff from uh, 2019 Mustang and um, kits that we have for the uh, 67 Mustang Fastback, and we got a shit ton of weather stripping around here, which is gonna be really good because these windows are notoriously bad at sealing up there, um, and there's a lot of wind noise and different stuff like that, and this is gonna be great for the, uh, the long distance drive and everything to have a really good seal. It's gonna be super helpful, make it a lot less drafty. We tried the back glass uh, rubber gasket thing and it's just like, our hole is exactly the right size. I'll tell you that much. Our hole is the size that it sh it's supposed to be. But other than that, it, we just could not make it work. We suck at those things. Oscar and I have only pulled it off once on his Mustang. Um, so we are uh, we are taping, we're masking off, we're uh, painting primer around the outsides of the windshield and the back glass to get ready to glue them in. So that stuff, uh, the back glass is under a heat lamp right now, drying up. This is about to get painted and then it'll go heat lamp as well. And then we're gonna glue these things in and then I'm sure the list will somehow magically grow. Wheels and tires are off at the wheel and tire shop. Hopefully we get them back soon. It 
It's the final countdown. We've got the glass in. We're working on our molding, our trim for the glass. We've got the windshield wipers in. We've got other stuff done. It's 2 p.m. at this point. I've got uh, one hour of sleep, so I'm ready to hit the road. Wheels and tires are back. I'm hoping we made the right decision on this. What we're doing right now is adjusting the suspension, raising it up a little bit, because it was, it was too low on the other wheels anyway, so we're gonna raise it up just a touch, make sure that, because I gotta do an over a thousand mile road trip in this car, I don't wanna be scraping the whole way. So we're gonna raise it up just a touch, and then we'll test fit these new wheels and see how they look. First time seeing it on the ground on the new wheels and I'm really, really glad we made this choice. They look good on the car and the different tone of color I think really helps both the paint and the wheels themselves. I'm, I'm finally very, very happy with the wheel selection now. Huge thanks to Koenig for sending us one, two, three, four sets of wheels and four other trial wheels. That's epic of them and it allowed us to do this last minute change to run the wheels that I was super happy with. Now, we uh, adjusted the suspension a little bit, but we didn't adjust it enough. We need to raise it up a little bit more for me to get to SEMA. At SEMA for a show, I might lower it back down. We'll see. It's 3 p.m., so I'm only three hours behind schedule, which considering everything that happened in this build and our usual amount of behind schedule, not too bad. So in the next episode, I will be road tripping this vehicle. Chelsea and I will be road tripping this vehicle over a thousand miles to SEMA. I really hope we make it. I hope we make it drama free, but you'll have to see in the next episode. Make sure you subscribe so you see that. Thank you so much for all the support, watching all these videos of this crazy build and the fun time that we had making this thing become a reality over the last month. We appreciate it so much. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.